That's why Jimmy's on such good terms with the press. Chocolates always help. It's the start of the world final. Stephen Hendry against Jimmy White. We'll hear from Jack Carnham and John Virgo after the introduction of the players. Ladies and gentlemen, now to the players and first one of the greatest attractions in the history of the game whose love affair with his adoring fans goes endlessly on and this is the title he needs so much to make his star study career complete. On to centre stage in this year's Embassy World Final, <coughs> will you welcome please the birthday boy of London town, Jimmy White. <laughs> Brilliant opponent with a faultless game has, in his relatively short career, broken every record in the book. And this gifted young Scot, he's travelled the world in true ambassador style to give class and dignity to the game that he loves. To defend the coveted world crown, will you welcome, please, from Scotland, just 24 years of age, the world number one and the reigning world champion, Stephen Hendry. <laughs> So the photographers I will do come it. to the table and the Thank photographs you, are Thanks taken. Thank you, You've got that out of your system. I don't want to hear anyone shouting at all in the arena today. Thank you. And Len Ganley giving the audience a gentle warning there that we want a great deal of hush. And what a final this is going to be. The world champion defending his title against Thank you, the challenger making his fifth attempt. <coughs> so, a break by Jimmy White and a possible chance here. The sort that uh, Stephen Hendry knocks in, John. Yes, but first shot in the final. They'll be feeling the butterflies. I think Jimmy was when he played that break-off shot. Overhit it. One. Nine. And Stephen very quickly into his stride, looking very smooth. Now this is where confidence in your technique comes in, of course. He'll be nervous, but he believes what he's doing is correct. He knows that if he can just push the cue straight through the cue ball, then it should go where he's aiming, no matter how nervous he is. This is a nice opportunity to really get settled in. And after a few shots, you'll start to feel, well, normal. 14.
22. And when you look at the record book and see these two young men, respectively 23 and 30 years of age, it's quite incredible the, uh, the achievements they made. They've practically broken up every record in the book. 28. And not satisfied with breaking the records, Jim has even worked it that he's playing on his 29. birthday, would you believe? Bit of a magician. So, what a feast we should have. Played that well. 36. Maybe looking off this red to get an angle on the black to disturb the cluster. But what a good confident start at this is from Stephen Hendry. First visit to the table. And looking so composed and relaxed. If Stephen had any uh, nerves, I think he left them on the practice table. Yes, Jack, and I think, 67. if anything, when people talk about the difficulty of playing particular games, talk about golf, talk about snooker, this is one of the big 68. problems with snooker. Jimmy White has come out here today, ready to play for his life. He's had one shot, and if Stephen now pots this, he's lost the frame. And that's all he can do now, just sit and watch. 74. 75. Yes, I watched, in fact, talked Tom Stephen when he won the, the Masters Tournament in London. And uh, that was for about the fourth or fifth time. 81. But there's no tournament uh, that really matches up for the, for the Embassy World. 82. 89. 90. Just looking at the scores, he can't get to Steve Davis's highest break in this tournament so far this year of 144 but what an unbelievable performance this is and just 96. shows you the standard 
of this young man. First visit to the table, World Championship Five final, seven. and this pink and it'll be a century break. So the blue on the spot. Just saying, Jack, it's amazing, isn't it? Jimmy just had the one shot so far in this final. It doesn't look as though he's going to get another one. No, I was just thinking, John, uh, so much depends how uh, Jimmy can cope with this. Uh, you know, every player has to have a little warm-up if it's only a couple of shots, but anyway, we'll see. But, I mean, this is unbelievable. One hundred and twenty-three. One hundred and twenty-nine. Well, hang on to the roof. Well, a hundred and thirty-six grade in the first round. A remarkable performance from Stephen Hendry to take the first frame of the Embassy World Championship and to take it at his very first stroke. Well, I'm not sure of what I'm saying here, John, but that must be some sort of record, surely. Well, he's just an incredible young man. I remember in the final last year, the last two frames, he made two centuries. And to just come out like that. OK, Jimmy over it is safety shot by maybe a foot. And then never gets another shot. That's a standard that... Well, Jimmy will be hoping that he can't keep up. And as you say, Jack, we all need a bit of practice on the table. Jimmy will be waiting to see if he can get a shot this frame. Yes, he'll, uh, he'll have to hang on to his nerves a little. possible chance here to the uh, left middle pocket. And no risks. <coughs> yes, yeah, so obviously Stephen must be over the moon with his start and that gives you the confidence to not 
want to take risks, really. Be patient, and you know if you get a chance, you're going to take it. On the other hand, obviously Jimmy under pressure. He left him one red before and sat down for the rest of the frame, so you've got to try and keep it tight, keep it safe. And catching the green is the last thing you needed. Oh, Jimmy looked a little disappointed then. And what? that's why this young man is lethal. Pink spot not available, so the Seven. highest available, in fact the only one was the green spot. Eight. A little bit congested around the black area. Like knowing Stephen, he'll think of something. Beautiful strength. Thirteen. And Jimmy will be feeling a little bit anxious. Could it happen again? Well, maybe not quite yet, Jack. It is the best of 35 frames. And uh, basically, 14. I think Jimmy just now is just hoping he can get a chance. And I've always said in any match, until you win your first frame, you never really settle. Well, is it the pink or the blue? Only Stephen knows. Twenty-nine. Well, just just a whisker short. Yes, this is the problem with the the black not being available. He's got to keep going up for the blue. And if you don't get the right angle, then obviously you're left with a difficult shot. He's looking 
to see if there's a plant. Maybe it is. He looks to have played for something in the right Ready. corner pocket. The red in the open wouldn't be much good to him, positional wise. Well, he's missed. Stephen Henry. Well, there's a red there, but Jimmy has to be very careful here. He's refusing the ball that's on. I think he's very wise too. Well, took that red dangerously close to the right corner pocket, but that nice kiss on the green. Not left anything easy for Stephen Hendry. He's looking at the two reds in the middle of the table to see if he can make them into a plant. have uh, done him a favour there, but uh, Jimmy will surely try and do something about this. Not easy. Swerve shot could be very dangerous. Jack, I certainly agree with that, considering that's the first ball he's potted in the match so far. And he knew that if he missed it, he was going to leave that red over the right corner pocket. Six. That was a shot and a half. Well, it was important there that he did get the right side of the blue. He could maybe then have tackled the reds around the black, but he's got to make the best of this. It's not easy. Yes, he might not play direct on the red near the right corner pocket. Those two reds down the right-hand side of the table, he could knock one onto the other. He's only got to get remotely near the pocket to knock the red in, and it might be better for position. psychological states of course it'd be nice if Jimmy could somehow win the frame at this visit I know it's a tall order but Stephen Hendry's shown Jimmy how well he's going to play given the chance and Jimmy's got to try and do the same Well, I'm sure Jimmy this time will take a chance and try and bring the black into play. He's 15 points behind. A couple of reds on just above the black uh, tied up. So it could be a good calculated risk. And then it would possibly give him a frame winning chance.
25. The red over the left-hand pocket there just prevented Jimmy from doing precisely what you said there, John, but he's got another bite of the cherry here. Thirty-one. Well, just enough. And Stephen there, well, he's concentrating just as hard as ever, watching anxiously. Thirty-six. Just a little bit shorter pace. I think he wanted to be on one of these just to roll it in and play for the black in the opposite corner. I think they both go, so he's got a nice angle to pot it, but he's going to have to go up for the blue. Two points to lead. Ahead. Yes, and what a clever shot that was in potting the ball. He sent the other one to bring the black into play. Forty-two. This could be the frame winner if he can get this. Forty-three. Well, he's looking smooth, John, and. That means his nerves have got to be pretty good. Fifty-one. Fifty-one. Now that's a pity. So he's got a black now, and will he try and tackle the red as well? It's not an easy black. Oh, well, that's bad. A little bit too much work there. 58. Well, what a tremendous response this has been from Jimmy. I don't think it's going to be a frame winner. But I don't think he can afford to take this red on. Tremendous response. So, 24 ahead and 35 on the table. Just got to hit. No problem hitting the red. Can he get it safe? He'll settle for that. I think Stephen can just snick the red, but I don't know whether he can guarantee a safety shot. Well, Jimmy might go for this, this red in a colour. Not easy though. said John it wasn't easy but didn't he make it look easy almost ridiculous but uh, anyway now it deserves the just reward from that shot yes when we were all looking forward to this final with Stephen and Jimmy play the shots great break builders well 
These have been the first two frames, and if this is the standard that's going to carry on, this will be a classic. Thirty-one points ahead. Three. Yes, it's going to be two snookers required. But at least there's a chance that green goes in. I'm certain Stephen wouldn't have bothered getting out of his chair. Stephen Hendry. Three. <laughs> So the litcher. So that surely Stephen says okay. So the second frame goes to Jimmy White. One frame all. Well, John, I thought my feelings were there that Jimmy was going to be under terrible pressure and that he might show little signs of being nervous with such a wonderful start by John. But those thoughts have now been totally dismissed. I think Jimmy was superb in that frame. Well, I couldn't agree more. As I say, the first frame, he had one shot, he broke off. It was very important he responded when he was given the opportunity. He knows how well Stephen Henry can play. He found that out last year. And Stephen couldn't have had a better, well, it was a dream start. First visit, 136 break. And now he knows that Jimmy White's in form. What a match. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Third frame, Jimmy White, you break. a better break off and Jimmy there you don't often see a player do that stood there willing that cue ball to get closer to that ball cushion that's how important every safety shot's going to be with these two great players shot a little rub of the green there yes Stephen caught the red much too thick was playing for the cue ball to get near the ball cushion I'm very fortunate just to find the weight to drift behind the green like that not going to be that easy for Jimmy White to find a safe spot for that cue ball
Paul Stroke, Fry, Adam Nip, <coughs> Stephen Hedges. Yes, Jimmy playing uh, twice across the table there. I think he must have been trying for the red, the uh, top end of the table on the cushion. Well, of course, if, uh, if Stephen was a little further off the cushion, he wouldn't think twice about this. But uh, he's still going for it. So that's a little bit fortunate for Jimmy. easy for Jimmy White. Well, I hope I don't sound boring by saying what a wonderful shot, but uh, you just have to say it, they really are. Nine. Well, didn't quite get the uh, bounce there off the cushion. And that was going to be a wonderful opportunity. Yellow ball. So, back to the safety board. Nine. Give me one. <laughs> I think Stephen being aware that Jim is in good potting form, he's wary with all the reds open. He's made a mistake. Nine. Well, the reds are spread about. Sixteen. It's a matter of uh, cue ball control now. Seventeen. Play for one of the two reds together in the corner pocket. Shouldn't be a problem now. Just get this red into the right centre. Go down for the brown. 25. And plenty of loose reds, so it doesn't have to be precise position. Yeah, 
Actually, he was looking for the uh, left middle there, but a little bit fortunate. He's come nicely on that corner. Okay. So he's achieved his ultimate position there. So now he should be off again. Yes, he's just having a look, and I think pots the pink when it's respotted. It might just cover up those two reds that are together. So if it's going to do that, why not can an interim develop into another pocket? 36. Well, he smiles because he's made a little mistake. Harder on the black than he wanted. Well, it just sneaked in. The positional shot on the black was a careless one. He stunned across for the black in the same pocket. He could have quite easily run through. So although he got the black, he's not come that good on this red. So pot and good positional play required. 45. Well, he's about two reds away from making the frame. Pretty safe. Black is available. Yellow ball. Jack, that was a brave shot to play it at that speed. Yes, it was, John, against the nap. It was very iffy. 48. But, uh, well, he hasn't quite got his intention there. He was looking for the pink. Yes, he had a quick look at the scoreboard. 52 points in front, so he still needs colour, red colour. And being so close to the cushion, if he pops the pink, it's very hard to visualise him missing a contact with the green. So he can't go in and out of balk. I mean, you could think, well, maybe a safety is a good shot, but let's see Jimmy White playing. Jimmy White Jack, who's loving every minute of it at the moment. <clears throat> oh, Jimmy. 54, Jimmy White. Well, there's 67 points on the table, and that's enough. pink, red waiting over the left corner pocket, but then of course that's where the problems begin. I'm going to have to clear the table to win this frame. 14. We'll need every ball that's left. This red easy, the other two not so. So quite a lot to do for Stephen to win the frame at this visit.
Agora sim. Well, he's got the uh, right angle for the red. Twenty-one. And this is the ball. Colours are twenty-eight. Their correct places. Twenty-nine. And that is perfect. Twenty points behind, but a big favourite now to take this frame. He's all remaining balls. Forty-one. So the high standard continues. Tremendous first frame by Stephen. Second frame to Jimmy. Jimmy had the chance. 45. Just made the vital mistake on what was frame ball. And now looks as though he's going to lose this frame. 50. Although Stephen just played a loose shot on the brown, further away from this pink than he would have liked. 56. Well, again, another remarkable frame. One we thought Jimmy had, but Stephen had words to say about that. And leads two frames to one. Well, it's a pity there. I feel a little bit for Jimmy because he played so well. He really battled there to win the frame. And then, John, he gets what was a comparatively simple frame ball. And I think he just, I don't know, he just took it a wee bit easy. Hey presto, and this fellow does the business. Yeah, so it looked to me as though he'd done the hard work, and maybe Jimmy thought that. Well, if it carries on like this, something's got to give. Surely this standard can't continue. One mistake and you lose the frame. First three frames have taken nine visits. Follow that. Six. 
13. Fourteen. Yes, Jimmy Waggles has said uh, he's got such a lot of cue power that uh, just a little touch and he gets maximum on it. Nineteen. He almost messed that blue up. Wonderful strength. Twenty-six. <laughs> and that's Jimmy Wright. It's like painting a picture. A little dab here and a little dab there. Thirty-three. Everything comes to life. Thirty-four. Well, if one could be critical of Jimmy, and that would be harsh indeed, he's just not catching the blue where he wants. And that's what it's all about. That's what Jimmy White has been craving for ever since he turned professional. Youngest ever amateur champion and was the youngest world amateur champion until Ronnie O'Sullivan. And absolutely superb. Find the pass, the side, just the pace, immaculate. Forty-eight is the lead. Well, he really uh, put some power in that one. Pity. But that is Jimmy. He does it. How can he stop doing it? Well, obviously, the reason he put that much power in the shot, he was trying to cannon into the cluster. Because Stevens come to the table, there's no pot on. Well, it's not all bad for Jimmy. 48 points to lead. But as we've seen so far, one mistake and it can be a last. an interesting choice of shot from Stephen Henry, had a red into the left middle, decided to play the safety. He's not got it that safe, I think Jimmy can get past the brown to this red on the left hand side of the table. And I think it will pot. about to say that this is a big ball and it could be I meant for Jimmy in the first instance but it could certainly be for Stephen now 
48 points behind, yet to score, but good fighting chance here. One. Well, not uh, quite as anticipated. Seven. the pink goes. And Stephen anxiously uh, looking there for the pink. Yes, it's there. Well, Jimmy sat there. He must be frightening to play against. I don't think Stephen Hendry's really missed a pot yet. He might have played a bad safety shot to give Jimmy a chance. Thirty three. There's a score, fifteen points behind. The yellow knot on its spot. And the black up at that end of the table. 34. They look to be maybe the only problems. And this, just over screw, wrong angle on the pink. You'll have to play the pink in the left centre with paste to come off the cushion across the table. So the more paste, the more difficult the pot. Well, Stephen Hendry, 34. That will be a tremendous relief to Jimmy White. And disappointment to uh, Stephen. He must have thought he was home and dry there. A little bit of snatching, that. <coughs> One. Well, he probably played a 
cannon into the green to hold the cue ball. Depends how he is on the yellow. I think the yellow is the only ball he can pot. But if he's got the angle, he can pot it. And of course, the yellow will be re-spotted. Very straight. But certainly worth the pot. One, Stephen Hendricks. Well, he's uh, had the rub there and put Jimmy on the spot here. This is a big bend. And this could be a free ball as well. It is. Ball stroke, four. And a free ball. Yeah, so I suppose in a way that could have been a lot worse. But Jimmy played that very quick. As you said, Jack, it was a very big bend he had to play. I'm sure Stephen wouldn't like the free ball. He'd like to be able to get through to pot this yellow. It looks as though he's just playing the brown and then snooker behind the black. be no bending operation this time. Yes, really, it's imperative Jimmy misses the yellow because he doesn't hit it. Of course, he leaves it over the pocket. Ball stroke, four, Stephen Henry. Well, he's got to have a thousand to one. He couldn't do Saturday that again. Please. Yeah, this might not be as bad as it looks, though. I from Jimmy's point of view, I think Stephen has got a lot of work to do to pot this yellow and get position on the green. So blue and pink required. By the standard set so far, you're not going to get more than two chances of frame, so when you get them, you've got to take them. Yes, John, and sad to say, two of uh, Jimmy's mistakes have been ones that he should have made. However, that's been uh, quite a remarkable session, this opening session. And uh, Stephen Hendry, well, he's taken it by three frames to one. Terrific start to that final, and the quality, I'm sure, will continue when we go back for frame five. That'll be in uh, around about 20 minutes' time. And Ted Lowe. Fifth frame? Yes, thank you, Steve. And at the table, Jimmy White. He's blown out all the candles on his birthday cake. 31 years of age today. The big question is, can he blow out the chances of young Stephen Hendry? Well, that's a poor break by Jimmy. Left Stephen. Not too difficult to read into this right-hand corner. We'll be going back towards the bulk end of the table.
seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. Twenty-two. Backing them each way, one into the center or one into the top. This one into the center and screwing back again for the black. Twenty-three. Thirty. That's a great shot from Stephen there. Brought three reds into play, the one at the back of the pack and the two on the right. Thirty one. Thirty-nine. Forty-six. Well, while the clear, uh, cue ball is being cleaned, you can see that the world's number one star there, Stephen Hendry, is in impeccable form. Looking, of course, for his third world title in four years. <clears throat> 47. Well, Steve, we just had a look at the red below the pink to see if it will go into this corner pocket. If it won't, he had the option of going into the pack. Looks as though that's what he's doing. Fifty-four. Fifty-five. He's human after all. He's made a slight mistake there. <laughs> that puts the mistake right. Stephen 68 ahead. Just the one red required to leave Jimmy needing snookers.
76. I've been waiting for one of those balls not to go in that pocket. It's a lovely picture. Four frames to one then. Jimmy having conceded that frame very early on. There were still five reds there. But Stephen Hendry in such form. John, I don't think I've seen uh, young Stephen uh, so dedicated, so intent. Well, I wouldn't just say Stephen in such form. I think both players have shown remarkable form. I mean, Jimmy made two mistakes in the early frames and paid the dearest penalty. I think we're seeing a, an Six excellent frame. final here. Stephen Henry, two frames. Well, yes, I quite agree with that. Uh, Jimmy's made uh, the more mistakes. Anyway, here we go again. Chase around the table. Yes, no real damage done, however, unless Stephen can get the red directly above the black. Attempting to do the same thing. Millions are wishing Jimmy well in this uh, final. All those wishes added together don't come up to the one single wish that Jimmy has, his one desire to take the MC World Championship title.
forced into playing that type of safety shot. Team have the choice of two reds here, one into the right corner, or the one I fancy will take into the green pocket. Wrong, Jim is attacking, going for the red and probably trying to screw back for the blank. And that's a great shot. Oh, he's not hit it hard enough. One. Jimmy White. That black remains there. Who for? he has a tough battle on his hands he also knows he mustn't leave up leave opportunities like this Fourteen. Fifteen. Yes, and it looks like Stephen's going to make Jimmy pay rather dearly for that simple mistake he made. Which he has done throughout the match so far. 22. Biting his fingernails. It's early days yet. Third day. Stephen Henry playing at a leisurely play pace. When looking at Stevens' face, I think he's made a mistake there. Always screwed the white. Playing for the back one of those two reds. Though Stephen's attempting a plant. Yes, excellent shot there. Spread the reds nicely about. And that one shot could be a frame winner. Fourteen. 
42. I don't think he'd spotted that plant, John, until he made the mistake. 43. No, I think you're right, Ted, but he's going to make full use of it. Already 42 points in front. And the way he's playing, well, I would certainly fancy him to win the frame at this visit. Fifty-five. Fifty-six. No, fifty-five points in front. Which means he now requires 62. just one more red. Leave Jimmy needing snooker the game. Jimmy can only watch. Seventy-eight. This is Stephen's fourth big break in the six frames played so far. The highest, of course, 84. was the hundred and thirty-six in the very first frame, and the least was sixty-three. Eighty-five. Yes, and this is snooker as good as you will see. Ninety-two. And certainly not what you expect in the first session of the world. Final. So 99, 99 as he comes to the colours. Just four colours to go for a break of 126 and the second century in the final. 108. Tried to send the cue ball all around the table. It makes no difference to Stephen Hendry. The black disappeared. The break, 126, as he goes ahead now five frames to one. An extraordinary performance by the world's number one star, the defending world champion Stephen Hendry. John Spencer, a former world champion himself. John, I can only turn to you and say, what do you think? Well, throughout this match, I think Stephen's probably missed 
two balls we should have potted and probably potted ten he shouldn't have potted I mean his standard of play has just been tremendous Jimmy's uh, standard early on was just as good but he made the couple of errors and paid the utmost penalty and he's going to have a lot of work to do to get back into this match now the way Stephen's playing I will remind you that this final is over a 35 frames. So it's the first one to 18 that picks up the magnificent world trophy. And of course a check for 175,000 pounds. One. I mean, those are the parts he just not missing. In fact, he looks rather disappointed that he didn't get round the back of the blank or the black into the opposite corner. One, Stephen Henry. A good opening red from Jimmy, but needs another good shot on the colour to hold position. He'd like to take the green, but round much easier, although he will probably be colliding with the blue. That looks to have worked out pretty good for him, however. Red just above the black spot. Six. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. 
37. Just lost position a little there. Been taking the red now. We'll have to go down the yellow or the brown. Fast stop. 37. Well, that is Jimmy White. Immediately he fouled the ball. He walked away. A face there full of hope and desire, but a touch of anguish. Yes, and a great pity that if ever Jimmy needed a break, it was there. Two straight on the black, but can screw back for the off the blue for this red to the left of the pack. Nice. This is the big shot now. Need an angle. Get into those reds. He's made sure he's got an angle there. So needs that little bit of luck now. Seventeen. Well, now here's a chance for Jimmy. Yes, that's Fifteen one of... Fifteen points ahead at the moment. Yes, that's one of the few risky shots we've seen Stephen play. Question is now, can Jimmy make him pay for it? two Nine. open reds. The red at the side of the pink, however, will only go into the centre pocket. I don't think it'll go into the corner. Obviously, it will go into the corner, so that's a good chance here for Jimmy. And now, 33 in front, Blackwood put in 40, 
So this would require red in color. To leave Jimmy, uh, to leave Stephen needing snookers. Yes, that's the one that counts. So this time it's uh, Stephen Hendry that needs the snookers. This is the last, ra uh, last frame of the first of four sessions in this final. So Stephen, 46 points behind, a red and a black, and one snooker required. One. We'll take the black first and then try and get the snooker off this last red. This must be a chance, surely, for a snooker. He's not played that very well at all. Still has the snooker, I think. Yes, but no problem for Jimmy to hit it off his left hand cushion. Return the compliment. And that, I suggest, spells the end of this seventh and last frame of the first session of this World Championship final. One. It's been a tremendous session. Devastating snooker. So, the world's number one and defending world champion Stephen Hendry. Two century breaks to open up the final. And they finish it with Jimmy showing exactly what he can do and what we hope to see him do later on. But at the moment, it's the world number one leading. Five frames to two. session ends with a much needed frame for Jimmy White and uh, that's a final that I think is going to keep us absorbed right through the bank holiday but the next coverage from the Crucible will be this evening BBC Two at five past nine. This is BBC Two where the venue is the Crucible in Sheffield and the host is David Byne.
Good evening. Welcome. This is the first night of the Embassy Snooker Championship of the World. And from 542 hopefuls, just two are now left, and two who have experienced before the special atmosphere of a World Snooker Final here in the Crucible. Stephen Hendry, the world's number one, and Jimmy White, the people's number one. To get here, Stephen Hendry had a pretty easy first rounder over Danny Fowler. Darren Morgan in the second round, he beat 13-4. Nigel Bond played very well, but Hendry played better, and he beat him 13-7 in the quarterfinal. And then there was the first ever all-Scottish semi-final here in the Embassy Championship. McManus had a good try, but Hendry got him 16 frames to 8. As for Jimmy White, well, his form's been a little up and down. Joe Swale was a first-timer, one of the hottest prospects in snooker. He found the crucible atmosphere too much. He found Jimmy White too much. He went 10-4. Doug Mountjoy from Wales, the old veteran, went out 13-6. Dennis Taylor, the 1985 champion, went out 13-8. It was a good match. It was a better one against James Watanar, the Thailander, who started well, then Jimmy hit a purple patch and won a record 12 frames in a row. And Watanar was out 16 frames to nine. Well, this year there's a record pot of one million pounds in prize money. And if the snooker in a remarkable first session here this afternoon is anything to go by, these two players are already earning their checks. And Stephen very quickly into his stride. A remarkable performance by Stephen Hendry. 136 break in the first frame. Oh, that's a cracking shot. Hard enough. Looks like Stephen's going to make Jimmy uh, pay rather dearly for that simple mistake he made. This is snooker as good as you will see. An extraordinary performance by the world's number one star. Jimmy White, immediately he fouled the ball, he walked away. And they finish it with Jimmy showing exactly what he can do. But at the moment, it's the world number one leading. Five frames to two. And the first set of scores spelled out clearly in black and white. There's a long way to go. Nothing is clear cut yet. I'd like to see Jimmy winning it after all. Really, uh... I think 90% of the personnel in here, and I would like to see him winning that. Jimmy would be good for the game if he, if he did win it, but my head says, without any, any doubt at all, Stephen Henry. The way Stephen Henry is playing at the moment, I think he's going to win, but like everyone, I think uh, they all want to see Jimmy White win. Now, I've come with me, it's the best time to see Jimmy White win, so I hope he can do it. It's very difficult to come back from behind, because Henry's the best match player by far. I think Henry's... Just got a little bit more bottle. Stephen Hendry, definitely. Well, we can all forecast, but this is a funny old game. Joy with us now. The next stage of reality, the second session here. There's the famous trophy. Remember, it's the best of 35 frames in this final. Nine to be played tonight. The first to 18 eventually. And here they go. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Eighth frame, Stephen Hendry, two break. So, then Ganley, the referee on this year's final. And it's Stephen Hendry to break, having a great first session. And you'll hear commentary from John Virgo and Ray Edmonds. Mm. 
And straight away the break from Stephen Hendry has left Jimmy with a bit of a problem. Now then, I think Jimmy White, he was in a bit of trouble, but I think he's got away with it. Has to keep this young man off the table if it's at all possible for a shot to do. A brilliant start at the beginning of this final. Jimmy Luckin, he can hit the line of reds, the three, in the middle of the table. But he's got to catch them very thin. He tried a similar shot last visit and was very fortunate to get away with it. Well, it went in, but certainly not how he played it. If the red doesn't go in, it'll let Stephen... Henry in, so that was a misjudgment. But fortunately, Red went in the pocket, so Jimmy's still at the table. But just a safety shot. Green ball. One, Jimmy White. Stephen having a look round, looking for a safety. This is one of those situations where if you don't see one, sometimes you just go for the pot. And I think that's what he's doing. Tough shot. One. That's a trust to look with position. But it's his turn now to be able to play the safety, which could put Jimmy White in trouble. Blue ball. One, Stephen Henry. sure Jimmy was to the right hand side of the table it's a more difficult safety shot from that so Jimmy may have a go at a cut to the left corner Hit it on the thin side make sure that the cue ball went away Stephen had to play a very good shot there, and he did get the effect. He screwed back, but it was mainly because at the time the black wouldn't go in the right corner to screw up the table for the pink. So that pace kept the ball out of the pocket. So a chance for Jimmy White. One.
Seven. Well, a little bit short of where I think he would like to have been, but he's got the red, the furthest one away into the left middle. Blue's available after. Eight. Thirteen. Can get through to the red there, as you see, but a little bit straight and queuing's obstructed a bit by the red behind the cue ball. Ever Jimmy White, no half measures. Jimmy that White. wasn't an easy shot to play. I expected him to get it, but it was certainly missable. So, as on a couple of occasions this afternoon, Jimmy slipping up when he looked, being for a nice few points. And certainly, uh, Stephen Hendry scored a lot from those leaves. So. This is a chance for Stephen to really get a nice few points together. Eight. Twenty-four. Thirty-one. Mm, left the cue ball a little nearer the side cushion than perhaps is ideal. And that just made the pot a little more difficult. 31. So now. Chance for Jimmy. Immediately. Well, he can't believe it. Miss many of those. Maybe a slight movement on the shot. But it was a good chance. But maybe he's got away with it. The red that will pass the black, Stephen can't get through to for the other red. There's this red into the right centre, but that's certainly not easy. So maybe it might not be as costly as it first appeared. Thank you. So, this is Jimmy White's third chance. This is more than he's had in any frame so far in this match. Can he do it this time? Because he might not get another.
seven. Well, he might have stunned that a little bit too much. He was looking for that red, just the right of the black. And must just be on it. Eight. False trot. Eight, Jimmy White. Well, Seven. what can you say? Stephen Henry. Jimmy was to try and get the cue ball into the middle pocket from that angle. Even direct, he would have a problem. But he really shouldn't have been that close to the pocket. As it is, I don't think he's left Stephen any easy pot. He's having a look at the plant to the right-hand side, but... I don't think they're quite in line. Yeah, so I'm right in line with this shot, and Stephen has had a look to see if they're touching. If they are, then by hitting the first red on the right-hand side, it will push the second one over to the left, and I think it's makeable. It just depends whether Stephen thinks it's worth the risk. If he got it, he'd be certain to be on the black. So he obviously doesn't think it's worth the risk. So Jimmy White has been a little bit fortunate again. Can Stephen get through to that red? He can't. Well, he must be able to hit it. I'm not certain whether he can pot it. So this, without doubt, the scrappiest frame of the match so far. Near perfection this afternoon from Stephen Hendry, but maybe a little on edge, often harder to play well when you, you're in front. One. Ray, this is the Embassy World Final. And well, when they started today, I was just amazed. You expect a lot of tension to be in the players, and it didn't seem to be there. It's certainly Five. there this evening. seems easy at the moment doesn't seem to be able to get any good position well he's settled for the five points or is he going to have a go at the red that's nearest the pocket Ten. now this is a tough shot Ten, Jimmy White. It wasn't one that he was forced to take on. But uh, Jimmy doesn't like to refuse any kind of chance. He always thinks positively. So many times it works for him.
Well, they are tough along the top cushion, but he pots so many of them, you'd get surprised when he misses one. the best rest player that's ever played the game. I think that's a perfect example. Seven. Well, he's on this red, but not much chance of position. I think you just have to make certain of the red. Eight. And now safety. Just the one point in front, Jimmy White. So a lot's going to depend on who can get the best Five of the... Who can get the best of the safety. Create a chance for this last red. Eight, Jimmy White. Stephen could have left this one somewhat easier. <coughs> I think Jimmy White is certain to take it on. Gets it right, it could mean this frame. One. Good shot. Perfect on the black just to run it in off the side cushion. And, well, I felt this was a big frame for Jimmy White, the opening one. And as it hey. is so scrappy, you always feel it's a frame that Nine. the man behind needs to win. Sorry, yeah. More important to him than maybe Stephen. So, big frame, great chance. Yeah. Thirteen. So just the brown and blue. Stephen has been a little bit uh, anxious, or appeared to be, this frame. Seventeen. Well, it could be said that 5-2 in the world champion's favour wasn't perhaps a fair reflection of this afternoon, so Jimmy White takes the opening frame of this second session and now trails by five frames to three. Yeah, it's only the second time so far in this final that a frame has gone to 20 minutes. The shortest so far has been just seven minutes. And not too surprisingly, these two are old rivals. In fact, they've met on 22 occasions. It's pretty close in their records. It's 12-10 uh, to Stephen Hendry in all matches. There's his major wins. Uh, the Masters up in London. He's beaten Jimmy White three times in semi-finals. And, of course, the two epic wins here in the final of the Championship of the World, 1990 here, when he beat him 18-12. And uh, we can't forget last year, can we, when he beat him 18-14. But uh, Jimmy's got a few as well. In fact, he's uh, in major wins. They're level on six all. There's that world championship here, which a lot of people forget. They met here in the second round in 1988. And Jimmy uh, beat Henry in a great match, 13 frames to 12. The last time he beat him was in the United Kingdom Championship up in Preston. Uh, it was a semi-final and a pretty convincing score there in 91, nine frames to two. So Jimmy just two down now at uh, three five. Here's the next. Ninth frame. Jimmy White two break.
So Stephen Hendry continuing his very positive approach and uh, it certainly worked for him earlier on, but and a lot of pressure on that one with these two available for Jimmy White. Jimmy just checking where the black is going to go after he's potted it. If it's on its spot and that red just above it will pot in the corner pockets, then that's okay. If it doesn't, it's going to go up on the brown spot. Fifteen. Twenty-one. Twenty-eight. Jimmy didn't get into the reds quite as full as he normally does, and uh, cue ball's gone away down the table but this red over the right middle is just right for Jimmy 29 35. Thirty-six. And to hit that, there is a red at the bottom of the cluster that would pot in the right corner pocket. But he hasn't got a good angle on this blue. Just checking to see if anything is available. Got to be careful if he comes down the right hand side of the table, he doesn't make contact with the green. So I may elect to go in between the pink and yellow. He's got to get it right. Good positional shot required. Well, he went down the right hand side and caught the green. Well, that looks like end 41. of break, unless he plays on this very difficult red into the right centre. 41 point lead. Jimmy White, 41.
And this is the kind of situation where Jimmy White particularly has to be careful. Two frames got away from him this afternoon, which he looked like winning. And I really can't understand that shot, John, because he was under no pressure to have a go at that one. There was a safety shot on. Well, it was a three-quarter ball pot, Ray. If he gets it, he's on the black. But while he was unlucky, it looked to be a shot for nothing. The only red he could leave was the red he played. One. Rattled the jaws, kissed the cue ball into the cluster. Seventeen. Couldn't have wished for a better split of the reds, as it were. Just one in anything like a safe position. Twenty-four. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. This black to go in front in this frame. The only awkward one is the red near the left-hand cushion. Oh, when Jimmy White's sitting in his chair, he'll be thinking, 44. and that is really his only hope of having a chance in this frame. 45. Will Stephen elect to move it this time? Depends on the angle on the black. played the cannon. I know he's good at these pots, but this could have been easier. Well, Stephen, if there's any question about Stephen not producing it again this evening, as he did this afternoon, a bit scrappy the first frame, but he's now showing you that he's still in good form, hitting the ball superbly, and give him a chance, and you just have to sit down and watch. Sixty-nine. 
isn't on the brown, but he's gone 28 points in front and... 69, 22 on, so Jimmy White wanting a couple of snookers. Stephen can get to the edge of the brown. Well, it's close to the pocket, but you think, Jimmy, you'd like to leave this brown on the table. Obviously didn't think that... Four. He could get it safe and do that. But of course, if he'd left the brown on, he'd have had three balls to snooker behind. Now he's just the two. Yes, I think he's yeah. taken the chance, John, on one snooker to tie rather than uh, two snookers to win. But it lessens his chances, obviously, just the pink and black on. Yes, I misread the scoreboard, but you can't blame him for taking that chance. Nine. Hasn't hit the one. cue ball hard enough. <laughs> so, no problem for Stephen. Henry with that pin. It wasn't a lot of pressure on it. He virtually won the frame, but he's now... His three frame lead back, six frames to three in front. And I suppose it has to be said, John, that uh, Stephen is just about playing as well as we've seen him. And when his opponent is missing, he's clearing up with monotonous regularity. It's, uh, he really is punishing Jimmy very hard. Yes, obviously, Jimmy's, Jimmy's aware of what he's playing. He he knows, I mean, the frame he won, the first frame tonight, he got four chances. He knows that's going to be a rarity. When he gets a chance, he got in early, got a 40-odd. A little bit unlucky with his positional play. 